Hello everybody, Damascus Vox here with another knife review and today we'll be reviewing this guy. This is the Civivi Buttonlock Elementum. Now this has been around for quite some time now so I'm a little late to the party but that's just the thing with my channel. I'm always late to the party because I barely have time to do anything for myself. Uh, job, you know? Um, uh, but yeah, uh, before we get into uh, this, uh, please uh, consider subscribing if you like knife and EDC related content, then I definitely got you covered. So consider subscribing if that interests you at all. Now let's get into the video. I'm going to talk about the specs, uh, some of my personal thoughts and some of the things that other people are uh, talking about and just really get into the knife and just let you know, trying to answer all the questions that you may have. And, and keep in mind that I am, um, you know, regular dude. So I have personal biases, uh, and yeah, so that reflects how I like knives and how I review them. Um, now this is the Civivi Button Lock Elementum, as I already said, this is made in China, uh, and this is actually a pretty cool knife. But let's first get into the specs before I start talking and rambling about my personal opinions. Overall length, and let's go start off with the length, because I like to do it that way. Overall length in this guy is coming in just a little shy of eight inches. Uh, the blade length is about three and a half, which is cool. You got three and a quarter of a cutting uh, of cutting edge, which is to me awesome. Definitely like those. Um, definitely like the length on this. Uh, weight on this guy. Let me just get my scale. At this kind of time, I had it already out of the covering, so it's pretty good. I think I might need to get myself a new scale. I think I said this in a previous video, but I'm not sure how accurate uh, this scale is, so I might need to get a new one. So I'll take this with a little grain of salt, but this is somewhat close to what it weighs. 3.29. So this is actually a pretty light knife. That's very close to being very, very uh, lightweight. So that's actually... Not bad at all. Get a lot of knife for not too much weight, which is really nice. Size comparison on this guy. Sorry about that. Kind of fudged it. Working at an angle here. Uh, let's start off with everyone's favorite. Spyderco pair of three. And the PM2. There we go. So uh, right off the bat, you can see that uh, the handle length is pretty much similar to... Both of these in, in some ways. I mean, this one has a little bit of a longer handle, and but it's kind of closer to this one. Uh, but this one actually has a lot more blade and a lot more cutting edge comparable to this guy. Because as you know, Spyderco has interesting uh, handle to blade ratios, but there's never, uh, those never bothered me. So, pretty cool. Uh, next up, let's do Benchmade Bug Out. As you can see, I've been using it. Uh, this is the one with the carbon fiber, and it's super sick. Uh, and then I finally got myself a mini bug out, so I can compare it with that one a little bit more accurately. Since that this is an extremely, extremely overly popular knife, everyone loves it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it is a good knife, uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but now I can compare them uh, more... Uh, I don't know, Just it just seems better than using the Freak and the bug out, uh, using both bug outs, mini and uh, full-sized which I actually like um, uh, doing. And this is a very well-known, very popular knife, so this uh, size comparison just makes more sense to me. Okay, so it actually, uh, the button lock elementum is actually qu uh, quite longer than both of them, actually by quite a bit. Uh, that's actually quite a substantial difference, in my opinion. Handle and blade is quite a bit longer than both of these guys. So that's actually pretty cool. And I've always thought that this guy was small, but this guy's actually pretty much a full, uh, getting right there to a full size knife. This guy is tiny, but I can still get a full purchase on this guy. So I was complaining about nothing when I first handled the uh, bug out. That's why you keep going back to things that you think you don't like. Try it again. Uh, you might like it the second time around. So makes sense. Okay. Next. CJRB Feltzbar, full size, and CJRB Feltzbar Small. There you go. These are both in the canvas micarta. I love the feeling of canvas micarta. Um, there you go. As you can see, it is quite comparable to the full size. So that's actually pretty cool. I like that 
because I love the full size. So good, such a good knife. All right, and last but not least, everyone knows that we got to do it. Cold steel spada medium, sh medium. Cold steel spada. Oh, I need to dust this poor guy. I have a lot of knives, so some of them get quite dusty over time. It's been a while since I carried this guy. Um, so as you can see, uh, the spotter is larger than uh, this guy. Uh, I would have never guessed. Uh, and the blade length is actually quite similar to these, but this guy just has such a big bean handle that it ends up being a bigger handle. <laughs> okay. If it seems like I'm kind of crazy, is because I drink uh, quite a bit of coffee, and I am definitely caffeinated. Uh, so good. All right, and last, just want to give you a size comparison up against the original uh, Elementum. So as you can see, this guy is substantially longer than the original one. Handle and blade length, substantially longer. And it's so funny because at first when I got this guy, I thought this guy was more of a full size, but this guy's actually small. If you actually th think about it, I love this knife. And um, I'm a big knife person. I prefer a full size knife with a lot more handle to play with. Uh, but I love this knife. And I was like, uh, this knife, uh, I love it. And I'm like, the bug out, it, it's too small. I don't really like the bug out. It's too small. And then I put them together and I'm like, oh my goodness, I am dumb. This is bigger than the original one. So thought that was just kind of a funny little detail. So, yeah, that's why now I have this guy, especially in the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is sexy. Okay. Enough of that. Me rambling. Uh, what's up next? Done with the size comparisons. Uh, let's go with height. Height on this guy. This guy is not high. This guy is going to be super easy to carry up against the Spyderco family. Spyderco brothers. Okay, right there. As you can see, definitely... Not high. This guy is not going to be an issue in your pocket by any means. Oh, yeah. Very small. Very compact. Yeah, definitely definitely in height dimensions. Uh, it's going to be very easy to carry up against. That's good. As you can see, it's uh, right there with the bug out in height. Right up there. So, definitely going to be easy to carry for you. In pretty much any form of pants really uh with on this guy uh let's put him up against the pair of three and as you can see the width is quite similar to the pair of three uh maybe a little bit smaller on, uh, slimmer on this guy but very very just like minute it doesn't really matter the pivot sticks out a little bit so it kind of matches up and the button sticks out a little bit so it kind of matches up as well the pocket clips right there also kind of similar Pocket clips are a little similar. So the autofocus being all weird. Uh, blade thickness. Get my calibers. Okay. Get off dust. Dust is the bane of my existence. Zeroed in. Alright, let's see how thick this guy is. I'm not thinking this guy's going to be thick at all. Yep. 0 0.12. That is not thick. Let's do the cutting edge. And we are zeroed. Okay, cutting edge on this guy. Yep, 0 0.07. So, very thin. That is a very thin cutting edge. Which I think a lot of people are going to appreciate that. Uh, where's my... I lost my... Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, there it is. I wanted to make sure for the cut test I had my piece of paper nearby. I don't want to not show you how well this guy cuts. Um, the, the price. Price on this guy. Angle, I'm sorry. It, it, the action is great. Um, the, price on, uh, the price on this guy on Blade HQ uh, is $49.99, so about 50 bucks. So that's actually a really good price for this guy, in my opinion, with the materials you get, finish, uh, everything about it. Um, just yeah, 50 bucks. This is definitely a good price for 50 bucks. So 
but HQ is definitely doing it. I don't know why, but HQ makes it where you have to call them or put it in your cart to see the price on this guy. That is ridiculous. I don't get that. If you understand the reasoning behind that, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, for some reason, I had to put this in my cart to see the pricing on it. That doesn't make any sense. Um, it does, you don't have to buy it. You just have to put it in your cart. It's just weird. It's just like an extra step to see the price. That's just inconvenient. Uh, then on uh, Knife Center, this guy is $64.50. Same on Amazon, $64.50. Uh, $64 so VV is selling this for $25.99. Uh, sorry, uh, $75.99. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I would pay $75 for this, but that would definitely make me cringe a little bit because that's actually quite a bit of money. But Civivi does a great job on their knives. So, yeah, $75, why not? I mean, it has great action. It's got a uh, nice steel, which I also forgot to tell you guys about. Uh, the steel is uh, 14C, if you can see it right there, 14C28N, uh, Sandvik 14C28N, which is a fantastic uh, budget steel. Uh, it sharpens up real nice and uh, takes a really good edge. So, definitely like that. It's also stainless, which is also fun. Um, but yeah, $75, that's a bit much, don't you think? Uh, uh, so VV right now, they're all like riding that popularity train. They know that they got people. They know people love them. So they're like, let's uh, raise the prices just a tad bit and keep going and see how far we can go before there's outrage. Uh, because if you see Civivi's, uh, the new ones on the market the, uh, these days, still great knives, but you can see that Civivi is really just pushing their pricing. Uh, they're definitely climbing it. Uh, back then, and I've seen Civivi's, they're like mostly... Um, like under sixty dollars, and then some of them are like thirty nine dollars and stuff like that. Uh, lately, they've been only releasing well, I would say mostly releasing knives around the seventy dollar mark, and I'm just like, yeah, they they're definitely riding that popularity train. And then they came out with Send Cut, so I think that was kind of a strategic thing that they did there. They gave they made people fall in love with Civivi with low price and great quality. And then the up their prices slowly came out with Send Cut, which is basically taking the original place of Civivi, and then Civivi is now increasing price. So now you got uh, Wii, which is um, high, but uh, which is uh, sorry, uh, premium knives. Then you got uh, Civi uh, Civivi, which is more like high budget knives, and then you got Send Cut, which is budget knives. So it was pretty uh pretty strategic, I would say, uh, tactic that Civivi did if that was their. <laughs> They're, what they were trying to do, why, why they came out with Sin Cut out of nowhere, uh, is because they're trying to keep the budget thing going, but while increasing the price of uh, their Civivi line. Um, and then now, let's, uh, I think I said all the pricing. Uh, I believe I did. Yeah. Um, now let's get on to the cut test. <laughs> Now, I've never sharpened this knife. I think I used it just a little bit. Uh, cut, cut a little bit of plastic, uh, some um, probably some boxes and whatnot. Uh, but I've never sharpened it. And so let's see how well it, it held up. It was really sharp out of the box. Eh. There we go. Uh, out of the box, sharpness, uh, decent. I would say usable. Not really the the super sharpest maybe i just got you know one that wasn't sharpened perfect maybe i doled it out cutting that plastic really bad uh, but this is still a very workable edge uh just not crazy crazy sharp but i could probably put a pretty good edge on this myself if um you know if i put the time in uh, but definitely decent. Uh, for seventy-five dollars, uh, I would say that the edge should definitely be better. But for fifty bucks, I am not going to complain. This edge is fine. It's usable. It is workable. And maybe, maybe I can't remember. Maybe I uh, ended up uh, doing more damage to the edge when I was cutting things than I thought. Uh, so keep that in mind that I did use it a little bit. So that's not one hundred percent straight out of the box. Um, it was used a little bit. Still feels nicely sharp, and the edge geometry is just great. Uh, okay, so I did all of that. Now uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, you know some of the things that you got. The steel I already told you about the G10. Uh, there are multiple uh, models of this uh, guy. Uh, you can get uh, some in uh, micarta. Uh, there's uh, one in um, shred carbon fiber, which like has a uh, red, and, or one has blue 
uh, carbon fiber in it, and a Damascus blade. Um, I think there was micarta ones of this. I'm totally sorry. I can't remember now. I thought there was. Uh, but yeah, they do have a good, a good variety of uh, colors of G10. This is the black G10 version. I, I, I know that it's kind of everywhere you can find black, just all blacked out knives everywhere. But I'm sorry. I like uh, I, uh, it's black. Black is always cool. It's always gonna be cool. It's all blacked out knives. It's just cool. Um, and this guy has a drop point with a flat grind. It's got a black finish, and. Uh, as you know, the button, uh, the lock mechanism is a button, and yeah, uh, you've got your standard pocket uh, CVB pocket clip, which is nothing special, but nothing horrible. Um, it goes in and out of the pocket just fine. It's okay. I do not. I can. I don't. I don't dislike it, and I'm not crazy about it. So that is fine to me. Uh, now, the thing that everyone's been talking about, and I just want to put my two cents in there, because why not? Who wouldn't want to hear me talk about this stuff, right? <laughs> um, is the lack of a flipper tab. Uh, everywhere you go, you'll f you hear somebody talk about uh, the Elementum. Where's the flipper tab? It should have had a flipper tab. Uh, it would have been better as a flipper, where you could flip it out and then use the button or something like that. It, it only has one method of op uh, deployment and disengagement which is the button and a lot of people dislike that me on the other hand i'm not going to sound I'm trying to sound holier than I like a martyr i don't care it doesn't need a flipper tab it looks fine the way it is i like its sleek and slender design i like it that it only has one method of open and close it's like if you have multiple methods of o uh, opening and closing a knife then you got all this stuff on your blade. This one just keeps it nice and simple, straight to the point. It's a button lock, and that's what it wants to be. That's what it's going to be. It opens and closes via button lock. It's the button lock elementum. It wants you to focus on only the button lock, and that is it. So I like that. It makes it its own kind of thing. Uh, you don't have to worry about any other thing. You don't have to do that. But I do understand. Don't, don't get me wrong. I do understand having multiple choices. It makes sense. Sometimes you just want... You know a different way it's like when a knife company tells you that this is the way you have to use their product sometimes that can be kind of annoying and it's like uh no i kind of want uh, multiple options uh flipper tab uh, thumb studs or the button lock give me an options but i like the way how they did this one it keeps it nothing uh nothing in the way it keeps it nice sleek and slender uh and there's a little bit of texturing on the button so it's subtle but you can feel it and it gives you a nice grip when clicking the button. This is a very fidgety knife, and you can do this all day long. Uh, now, having said all that, and about my rant about the flipper tab, which I don't mind that they don't have it. I like it. I like it that it's completely uh, slender. You don't have this thing sticking out of the back. But having said that, this is I'm going to sound so stupid. Uh, I do actually kind of wish it did have a flipper tab because it would keep with the aesthetic of the original Elementum. It would have been kind of cool that if this one kept with the aesthetic that it had this little uh, tab right here uh, under the uh, pivot and handle area. Um, because the fixed blade has the flipper tab and you don't even use the flipper tab. It kind of works as a guard on the fixed blade. So that would have been kind of cool to keep in with the aesthetic of, um, you can see that I use this guy a lot. They keep with the aesthetic of the elementum so you can just see that you know it's like oh yeah that's the elementum it has the, all the same look just a little bit bigger and with a button lock uh that's the only reason why i think that it should have had uh a flipper tab by aesthetic <laughs> i mean that's so silly but that's just that's just me why i think it should have had a flipper tab because it would have stuck with the theme of the elementum because even the fixed blade has the flipper tab <laughs> um but that's just that's just my opinion which does not matter. My opinion does not matter. Uh, it's all about what you think, and you can take from my review what you will. But otherwise, you know, it kind of makes this this knife its own thing. It kind of kind of keeps with the family of the uh, Elementum while being its own knife. So that's actually also something I can appreciate and like. So yeah, uh, it also uh, has minim minimal stuff on the. Uh, blade, which is really nice. Nothing, just the steel. Uh, the logo is right there on the pivot, which I like that Civivi does that. It allows them to brand it, but it also just looks cool. Instead of having all this junk all over our blades, 
It's like you don't you don't need all your branding all and all this garbage on my blade. It's just like I like it that it's sterile. It's nice. Uh, you got this really pronounced sharpening choil, so this knife is going to have a lot of uh, of um, life to it. So that's really nice. I really appreciate that. Got a nice swedge grind, so the tip is not uh, uh, too weak, but it, it is thin for your puncture tasks, which is also really nice. This guy has a very thin edge geometry, which is going to make it nice and slicey once I sharpen it up a little bit better. And uh, the pocket clip is reversible, unlike the original Elementum, which is only righty friendly. Uh, this guy is um, uh, righty and lefty friendly. You just have to train yourself to close the button with your finger, which, uh, you know, with your uh, pointer finger, which is not going to be uh, difficult uh, and then just uh, engage it like that. So left-handed use is still very workable, which is cool. Uh, and there's no uh, lanyard hole, so you don't get that little cutout right there. Uh, with this guy, it's a hidden lanyard um, like loop pin with a nice backspacer so that's actually pretty cool i actually like the way how they did that i like that there's no holes or anything so that's actually pretty cool oh uh, the action on this guy is very nice comes in and out very nice um i think this guy's running dry right now i haven't lubricated it and it's it's on bearing so it flicks in and out really nice it'll probably be even better once i lubricate it but this is fantastic the action on it is just phenomenal uh, i really really like uh the action on this is very fidgety very nice uh now uh hold on lost my train of thought again oh gravity knife uh this is considered a gravity knife because it's using gravity to close and open the knife so just keep in mind of your knife laws bleh, knife laws um because this would be considered a gravity knife and as we all know as we all know gravity knives are the biggest threat to humanity ever this gravity knife can destroy us all, so just be very careful of that, and that's why it's banned in some places, and it's illegal to carry a gravity knife in some states, some countries, uh, because it's super deadly and dangerous. Uh, if you didn't detect sarcasm, that was sarcasm. Uh, uh, so yeah, just keep in mind that this is a gravity knife, and it's going to definitely uh, prohibit some people from actually being able to enjoy this uh, knife, and which is an unfortunate thing. This is definitely more of a particular audience knife. It's not going to be for everybody. It's not going to appease to everybody like the original Elementum, which is definitely one of the most EDC friendly knife that pretty much anybody can have. And I can recommend to anybody and everybody. Uh, where this one is going to be a little bit more uh, to a fan group of button locks and Elementum enthusiasts. Uh, as you can see, it has a tad, tad bit of shouldering, not really that much. And I'm not sure if I can get the lighting well on the lock without my hands casting a shadow. Uh, the locking mechanism right there. You can see it's a disc that gets pushed away. Uh, it's Everything's all black, so it's kind of hard to see. I should have brought my flashlight again. Didn't think I was going to need it this time. Let's see if I can bring one of my lights over to the corner right over here. There. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Okay, so as you can see right there, don't want to cut myself, it's a disc that there's a spring on this side, a little like liner spring that's pushing the disc to this way. So when you push this button, it disengages that spring and moves that disc out of the tang, which has this groove right there. So that's actually a really secure locking mechanism. Yeah, so that's actually really good. I definitely can trust this with... Uh, decent use that that lock is not gonna really fail uh the screws on this guy uh, i believe they're all t8 i forgot to check but i believe they're t8 which i hate t6s so t8 is good uh yeah those look like t8s to me and disassembly should be pretty fairly easy on this guy i'm not sure sure about that uh button lock um but it doesn't look too much uh like it's gonna be a problem so disassembly should be uh 
uh, decent, if not just a tad bit harder. The original one, fantastic assembly. Uh, this guy is just awesome to take apart and put back together. I definitely like that. So this guy should be somewhere around the same level uh, of the original one. Just maybe a little bit more, you know, steps with that button lock, which is also interesting. And to finish things off, so I can stop rambling, um, uh, the ergos on this guy are just awesome. I don't feel any hot spots, even with this uh, pocket clip kind of protruding upwards. Yeah, no hot spots. Very comfortable. You have so much control over this knife. You have so much handle to play with. Uh, you could kind of use this as a fork toy a little bit. I would definitely be careful with it because this spot's rounded, so it doesn't give you as much traction, uh, and you just don't want to slip up onto the choil. Uh, or the you know the sharp spot right here and cut yourself but he's got like you know good jipping right there uh you can definitely you know use this in a reverse grip uh you can you have just so much control over this knife you could just flip it around flip flip can make your cut put it away boom it is so just ergonomically friendly fast and easy to use so this is an awesome edc knife if you're legally allowed to carry it carry it <laughs> carry it <laughs> but yeah i I really like this knife. This is an awesome knife. I definitely recommend this to somebody who likes just bun locks and does not mind that there's no flipper tab. I know some people are, are irked about that. Me, I only want the flipper tab for the stinking aesthetic, which is silly. But yeah, that's just my opinion. But the design of this knife is just really good. And it's very ergonomically friendly. It's just another, uh, another great knife from Civivi. Fin finish, phenomenal. Uh, and... The liners right there, as you can see, are milled out, which I can appreciate. Cut down that uh, weight, which is really nice. And uh, the the liners are just protruding a little bit. They're not flush with the scales, which is okay. Does not create any hot spots, and it actually feels very ergonomically friendly. Just an awesome piece from Civivi, and I can definitely recommend this knife to anyone who's an Elementum fan or a Civivi fan in general. It may not be the Elementum for you. It may not be the Civivi for you, but this is definitely something worth checking out. And I love it. So, I hope you like this video. If you like more knife and EDC related content, check out my other videos and remember to subscribe because I post every Saturday and every other Sunday. There'll be more knives and more videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye.